In this lesson, we want to talk about NTP, which stands for Network Time Protocol. My favorite quote about time is that a man with one watch always knows what time it is. A man with two watches is never quite sure. We want our network devices to have one watch, one centralized clock that they can point to for authoritative time. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the theory surrounding NTP. Where does that authoritative time come from? And then we're going to see how to configure it on our Cisco routers. Let's consider how we keep all of our network devices time in sync. And we're going to do that using a protocol called NTP, the Network Time Protocol. But let's begin by asking, why is that so important? Why do we need to keep our devices time in sync? Well, we need accurate time in order to better interpret any sort of logs. If we're doing troubleshooting and we're looking at debugs, which have timestamps in them, or maybe syslog information that includes timestamp information, we need to be able to look at log output from multiple devices and compare them side by side on the same timeline. We need to do what's called event correlation. If something happened to this server at 2.15 a.m. And, and something happened to this router at 2.14 a.m., those events could be correlated. But in order to spot something like that, we need to have accurate time on all of our devices. And another reason we need to have accurate time is the use of digital certificates. When we're using a security on a network with something like RSA, where we're doing asymmetric encryption, we're getting a digital certificate from the uh, device we're wanting to communicate with. And that digital certificate expires at a certain day and time. We need to make sure it's not expired by us having correct date and time information. And those are just a couple of reasons we might want to have accurate time. Now let's talk about how NTP is going to give us that accurate time. There are internet-based NTP sources that have hyper-accurate time. We have some atomic clocks on the internet. And these atomic clocks use cesium-133 to keep accurate time. It's a little bit over 9 billion oscillations of the cesium-133 element equals one second. And these atomic clocks can give us hyper, hyper accurate time information. And this time is going to be communicated using NTP. And that protocol uses UDP port 123. And here's a memory aid for you. Whenever I think of NTP, I remember the old Jackson 5 song. Do you remember the, uh, the ABC song, ABC, easy as one, two, three? Well, that's what I think of when I think of NTP. I think NTP, easy as one, two, three, because it uses port 123. And the way we measure the believability of a time source is using a stratum number. The stratum number says how trustworthy is this time source. We don't get more trustworthy than being an atomic clock. So these atomic clocks on the internet, they have a stratum level of a zero. And in the United States, the Naval Observatory is the official keeper of the time. They have clocks in Washington, D.C. and Colorado Springs, Colorado. And there are servers on the internet that can learn from those stratum zero clocks. And maybe we get our time from one of those servers that's learning their time from the stratum zero clock. When those clocks learn time from a stratum zero source, then they are a stratum one source. And let's say that I have my router on my network, router R1, and I want to get time from one of those stratum one clocks out on the internet. Well, if I learn time from a stratum one clock, and then I propagate time information to devices on my network so my network devices don't all have to go out to the internet to get time. They can get it from me. They can get it from R1. Well, as I become their time source, I'm now a stratum 2 time source. A stratum 2 time source learn time from a stratum 1 time source. And then I can send my information out to my network devices. You see, it increments each time. If I learn something from a stratum 2 source, then suddenly I'm a stratum 3 source. Now, there is a way to have a Cisco router's internal clock provide time and be the authoritative time source. However, Cisco routers are not known for their hyper-accurate uh, timekeeping, so I wouldn't recommend that. If you can get time from the internet, I would prefer to do that. But you certainly can say, I want to be the NTP master and I'm going to provide time for my internal clock. It's probably not going to be super, super accurate, though, even if you set the time correctly. So generally, we'll want to get time from the internet. 
And by the way, the stratum values are 0 through 15. 0 being those hyper-accurate atomic clocks. And then we can go through router after router after router until we get to a stratum value of 15. 15 is the highest stratum value that we can go to and still believe it somewhat. If we have a stratum value of 16, that's suddenly not believable. And that's a look at the theory of NTP. In our next video, I'm going to show you how we can configure NTP. Now that we've talked about the theory of Network Time Protocol, or NTP, let's see how to set it up. And please remember, normally we're going to be pointing to an authoritative time source out on the internet. We're not going to be relying on a Cisco router's internal clock for authoritative time. They're not known for having hyper-accurate time. But I thought for a lab environment, you might want to set up a router as the quote-unquote authoritative time source. So I want to show you how to do that with the understanding that this is not a real-world best practice. But I've got this router that's not connected to the internet right now, that's just named internet. And we're going to pretend that this is our internet time source. Here's how we would set things up. First, I would set the clock. I would say clock set. Notice I'm not even going into global configuration mode to set this up. And let's just make up a time. Let's say it's, let's say it's noon. It's 12 colon zero zero colon zero zero. So 12 hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. It's noon, in other words. And we can set the date after that. Let's say that it is August the 30th, 2019. And now we can go into global configuration mode and say what time zone we're in. Well, let's pretend that this internet time source is based on GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, or UTC, Universal Time Coordinated. And we'll say clock, time zone, and I'll say it is UTC. And after... We say UTC, we give the offset from UTC, which is zero, because we're saying we are UTC time. And we'll say the offset is zero for us. And now I can say this is an NTP master, and I can specify a stratum value. Now, notice, even though the valid stratum values are zero through 15, we don't have the option of saying zero. Obviously, we're not one of those atomic clocks. We're a Cisco router, so we cannot even fake it and say we have a stratum value of zero. We have to say 1 through 15. And I'll say that I'm a stratum level of 3, so NTP master 3. And we're done. We've now created our fictitious internet-based time server. Let's go over to router R1 and get time from that. But R1 is going to be in a different time zone. In R1, let's go into global configuration mode. I'll say NTP server, and I'll point to one of the IP addresses on that router. I've got a loopback address on the internet router of 1.1.1.1. We'll say we're pointing to that as our authoritative time source. And I'm going to set my time zone to Eastern Standard Time. I'll say clock, time zone, EST, and that's GMT or UTC minus 5. And uh, we do observe daylight savings time in the Eastern time zone. We spring forward and we fall back. And currently, as I record this video, we're actually in daylight savings time. So I'll educate the router about that. I'll say clock, summertime. And I'll say during the summertime, we're going to have a time zone of EDT, Eastern Daylight Time, instead of Eastern Standard Time. And that's going to be recurring every year. Now, we could be really specific and say when it occurs, what date in March or what date in November. I always have trouble remembering that. I just say clock, summertime, EDT recurring, and it just knows the right time to spring forward and fall back. And we're done here. And I'll say end. Now let's do a show clock to see what time we think it is. Well, obviously this is not learn time from our time source because I just made up a time. I said it was noon. And even if we were a certain number of hours off, we certainly wouldn't have a 17 right there. So I don't think we're synchronized. We can confirm that by doing a show NTP status command. And it says our stratum is 16, which is unbelievable. And this might make us wonder if we configured something incorrectly. And I would suggest that no, we did not. We set the NTP server to 1.1.1.1. Is that reachable? Can I ping 1.1.1.1? Yeah, I sure can. So why have I not synchronized my time? Actually, this is normal. The way NTP works, it doesn't want to make an assumption that a time update that it receives is completely accurate and immediately jump to that time. There's sort of a back and forth exchange that goes on between this router and the time source. But over a period of time, it's going to converge and learn time from that time source. But we don't completely trust it yet. We could even do a debug NTP packet 
to see some of the back and forth exchanges going on so we know we're not just sitting dormant. We are actively having a conversation with our NTP server. Let's give it a few seconds. But what we're going to have to do is wait maybe as long as 15 minutes before this works. And that's not uncommon. That is normal behavior. Obviously, we're not going to let the video run for 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is pause the video. And after a certain amount of time, I'll resume the video and we'll see if we have converged. But we see that we're talking with this server. We're talking to that NTP server. We've actually received information from that server. There's a conversation going on. But if I do a show NTP status, it still says... No reference clock, stratum 16, and that's just because we haven't had enough time to converge. So we'll pause the video right here, and I'll resume after about 15 or 20 minutes have elapsed. All right, it's been nearly 15 minutes uh, since we paused the video, and I just got some uh, debug information indicating that the time has changed. We jumped from August the 19th to August the 30th. Let me turn off the debugs. To do that, we'll say you all for undebug all. And let's do a show NTP status command. Ah, oh, much better. It now says we have a stratum of four and it says our reference is 1.1.1.1. So we do know that we're talking to an NTP server and NTP tries to estimate how much delay there is between the time the NTP server sends us the information and when we receive it. So it does its best to make sure that we are as accurate as possible. Let's do a show NTP, use some context sensitive help. And we can say associations, and it tells us that we are associated with an NTP server of 1.1.1.1. So now if I do a show clock command, it thinks it is now August the 30th with an appropriate time offset from what we configured the internet router to say. And that's a look at how we can configure the network time protocol. Mm -hmm.